what's up to Kim at Static Assist from around the entire world. Today I have the amazing privilege to be interviewing Yoni Z. Yoni, how are you doing? Baruch Hashem, thank you for having me. How are you? Baruch Hashem, so happy here. All right, can you please share with us a little bit about yourself, your hobbies, what do you enjoy doing, a little bit about your background? Let's hear. What do I like doing? Um, I like to make music, but I'm guessing you already knew that. Um, I like hanging out with my friends. I like making music videos. I like sports. Um, I like art. And um, what else would you like to know in particular? A little bit about your background. Like, where were you born? I was born in Crown Heights. Um, I was born and raised in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, New York. Shout out Chabad. Woohoo. Um, and my family currently lives in Muncie. Um, and I have a place, um, in Crown Heights as well. So I'm between the two of them. Beautiful. All right. You're a singer. How did you end up in such a role? What's the story behind you? Story behind me. Um, so when I was 16 years old, um, my Rosh Hashiva told me that, uh, you know, I should continue to learn, but he felt that I also um, had some sort of an art and artistic expression that um, needed to be uh, nurtured. And he knew it was music. And with his bracha, I began to sing um, and started out with very, very small things. Um, I didn't even want to do it at first. I was really nervous. Um, but then it kind of just metastasized into something so much bigger. And uh, Baruch Hashem for that. Wow, Baruch Hashem. Can you please describe to us what preparation for a music video or singing on stage, etc., looks like? So um, it takes a lot of prep um, for singing on stage. It's a lot of, um, for singing on stage, it's a lot of rehearsals, it's a lot of practice. You gotta make sure it's perfect. You really don't wanna mess it up on stage. For music videos, it takes even more work. There's a ton, a ton of prep that goes in, uh, making sure that all the loose ends are tied up because I like to make sure that my music videos look a lot a lot of fun and are professionally done. So that can take, you know, a month or two of, um, of prep before we actually even begin filming. Wow, beautiful. What's something you really love about this job? I love inspiring people. I love getting to put a smile on people's faces. I enjoy um, getting to talk to people, meet people, hear their life stories, hear about them, learn new things about people. And um, I think that's really the biggest blessing I have in what I do is being able to um, try to give inspiration to those around me. So I think that's the most rewarding and fun part of my job. Agreed. Now here's a tough one. Ready? That's okay. Go for it. What's something you really don't like about this what, job? About this job. Ooh, something I really don't like about this job. The pressure, the pressure of this job. Um, there is a constant stress and pressure when you are creating music um to you got to stay on the ball you got to keep up um you're only as good as your last hit and you're only as relevant as what you're up to um and that can be very 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 taxing at times um but i guess the the good far outweighs the bad so i'm still in it beautiful all right it's hard to juggle your daily life um plus what you do um, yeah, I mean, my daily life does consist of a lot of music. I'm also, um, a little bit, uh, uh, involved in real estate. Um, so there's both those things going on, but music definitely takes up the bulk of my time. Um, cause that's where I want the bulk of my time to go. I do want to be busy with that. And I writing and studio and production. I write a lot of my own songs. So that takes up wow. time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a lot, a lot of work on my part personally, 
it's not the kind of thing where I could just like put it on someone else to make it happen. So um, yeah, it takes a lot of focus from me, really. Right. I'm going to go out of the questions for a little bit. I want to ask you, how did you start writing songs? Because you said you started singing. That has nothing to do with writing songs. And writing songs is a big deal. Um, can you share with us what um, how that started? The truth is, is that it started when I started working on my first album and I wasn't getting offered the kind of songs that I wanted that I felt were good enough because composers were like, listen, you're a new guy on the block. You know, we're not going to take a chance on you. We could give a hit to someone who's famous. Um, and it's a lot less risk involved, so to speak. Right. Um, so that kind of pushed me into a corner where I was like, all right, then I'm going to write for myself. And that's what I had to do. Um, and then when I started realizing that the songs that I was writing were actually going over really well, so I doubled and tripled down on the writing, and now I do most of the writing, thank God. Wow. And what about the composing? It's the same thing? you Lyrics and melodies, both, yeah. I do most of it on my own. Wow. You don't get any help, or you do? You... Sometimes. So it depends on the song. It depends on the song. I definitely have had co-writers, um, but I haven't. Um, I I've just been really trying to make it happen on my own for the longest time now. Um, wow. And songs that I do write, um, thank God they gain a lot of traction. So I guess the crowd um, wants the most authentic version of me. Um, right. and that's what I'm going to continue giving them. Wow. Do you have an editor who like edits your songs or like you just, you read over them, you like them then you decide to go to your producer or whatever is to make the music and then you record it. Is that how it works? Or you have an editor who edits it and goes to another editor and edits it. And then you have to like go through a million things to, you know, I definitely run it by a few people. I definitely do that. Um, especially if it's in Hebrew, I want to make sure it's exact. Right. Um, I don't like to botch up the language. Um, but um, even in English, like I always kind of like, you know, run it by someone else. I double check it all, um, making sure that it all sits properly. And um, yeah, everything has to be reviewed before it's released. It Like nothing can get released if it's going to, you know, if there might be an error in it. Right. You know, Hebrew fluently, like how do you write songs in Hebrew? I do speak a fluent Hebrew. My parents are wow. Israeli. My parents are Israeli, so I speak a fluent Hebrew. Um yeah, I've been speaking Hebrew for years, practicing. Um, actually learned most of my Hebrew from music, from listening to music, um, not from home. So Whoa. yeah, my parents my parents were very busy learning English at the time. So they were speaking to us in English, and I was learning Hebrew um more on my own, to be honest. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. What is your biggest failure and what did you learn from it? I have so many failures. You have no idea. Um, my biggest failure. Um, my biggest failure, I think, is, you know, you're waiting to create something perfect. And it took me so many years to get out of my own way and understand that, you know, my father taught me a very valuable lesson. And that was you have to change this idea in your mind of aiming for perfection, mm -hmm. striving for excellence, because nothing's ever perfect. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. But if you strive for excellence, you can always get better at something. You can always fine tune it. And I think that it took me so many years to, from when I started singing to actually releasing my own original material, because I was so concerned, like, what will people say? And what will people think? Will it be good enough? And, um, I say to young artists today, if you're going to do it, just do it, you know, right. just, just yeah. jump into it head first. If you're going to, if you believe in yourself, then, then don't wait around because, you know, it may not nearly mealy. If you're not there for yourself, no one's going to be there for you. So, yeah. Right. Wow. What's your biggest challenge right now? My biggest challenge right now. Hmm. It's a good question. It is. <laughs> my biggest challenge right now um juggling my personal life and my professional life 
is my most challenging thing right now. Definitely. Yes. That is definitely my most challenging thing right now. Wow. Who's somebody you really, really admire? In the music industry? Anywhere. Anyone? Uh, who do I admire? Um, in the music industry, I'm going to say Avram Freed. I you think. know, you're like the eighth person who said that. Really? Yeah. Well, that says something about Avram Freed, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Um, and in life in general, who do I look up to? Um, well, you know, I, I grew up in a Lubavitch home. I still consider myself Lubavitch. So the Rebbe is always like a major part of what I see my music as a shlichus to do. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, you know, I always look for words of people that are wiser and, you know, have more experience than I do and learn from them. Right. Wow. Who has been your biggest support, mentor, role model, whatever, over the course of your career? Um, I've had many people who have helped me along the way. Um, you need you need a lot of help to really kind of succeed in this industry. Um, you need people to believe in you. And um, that's not an easy thing to do. But I had along the way, there were some really nice people um Lipa Schmelzer believed in me since a young age Shia Mandelwitz Alava Shalom who recently passed away uh Yossi Green um Yankee Katina who I worked with for years um yeah I had um I had some some real really really cool people who believed in me and uh gave me a shot and um I'm forever gonna be indebted to them for allowing me to get there Wow. How do you deal with pressure and stressful situations? I love it. I love it. I thrive on it. I do my best in pressureful and stressful situations. I'm not actually kidding, by the way. I'm not, I'm not actually kidding. Yeah, I hope you're not. No, I, I, I actually function probably best under pressure is when it demands, demands of me to be on the ball. Wow. I don't understand how people do that. When like I ask people how they deal with the pressure, they're all like, you know, this is how I roll, you know, like this is the only way I'm able to do things. I'm like, hello. <laughs> I can't deal with pressure at all. I can't, you know. I think that people in this industry are people that are um a lot of them from the get-go, they're kind of daredevils. They're kind of people that are very unafraid of things, which is why they got into this business in the first place, because you have to be kind of fearless because people are going to say all kinds of things about you and to you. And it's going to take many, many years of work and development to really show the world who you are. So I think that, you know, um, you know, a lot of people that are in this industry are people that are really gutsy. They're really, really right. gutsy people. You have to be. Right. Do you call yourself gutsy? No. <laughs> Am I gutsy? Um, I guess I have my days. I guess I have yeah. my days. Love it. All right. What is your most best and crazy memory throughout this adventure? Best and crazy memory throughout this adventure. Um, there are so many, but, you know, I was one time in... Um, I was flying back from Europe right before Hanukkah and I flew into Boston for a show and um, the show was actually in Connecticut, but the, where it was situated was I actually flew into the Boston airport and um, this was a few years ago in Hanukkah and um, there was this little girl in the crowd who came up to the stage and um, she said to me, you know, happy Hanukkah, Yoni Z. And um, so I stopped what I was doing and I, I looked down and I looked at her because it was a very high stage. And I said, what's your name? She said her name. And I said, I want everyone to join me in wishing, you know, so-and-so a happy Hanukkah. So um, everyone did. And then um, at the end of the week, I was at my wits end. I was like, you know, every night of Hanukkah I was performing and I remember it was the last night of Hanukkah and I was in Vermont and I needed to just push through this one last show. 
and I didn't have the strength for it. I just didn't have it. Um, and then I opened my phone on my to Shabbos and I saw, I received a message from her mother and the message read, hi, this is so-and-so's mom. I want you to know that you don't even know the impact that you made on her that day. Um, she actually goes for treatment every single day. Um, she was suffering from uh, the Yanamacha. And she said, yeah, and she said that every day when she goes into treatment, she asks to play your song Crown over and over and over again. So, um, and then she went on to share that they are a blended Jewish family. In other words, not everyone in the family is Jewish. Um, she is Jewish, her husband isn't, and she always allowed her children to choose their own course. And following the interaction that I had with her on that stage where I stopped everything to wish her a happy Hanukkah, she actually asked her mom to enroll her in Hebrew school next year. And that was like, it really hit home for me that you can sit and, you know, spend a minute with someone, give someone just the time of day and how important it is and how it can possibly change the course of their life. Um, so then I had energy, a renewed energy to do that last concert properly. I'm blown away. Wow. Yeah. What advice would you give someone wanting to pursue a career similar to yours? The best advice I can give someone that wants to pursue a career like this is find your own sound. And what I mean by that is, you know, people think that like, oh, I have like, you know, people come over to me and they're like, I have the group, I have an amazing voice, they'll tell me. And and, you know, I, I'm getting into the music industry and I always tell them, listen, there's a lot of great voices out there. But what the music industry really demands of someone is not so much a voice as much as it is an act. So, for example, yeah, you look at people who made it in the last, well, forever, but let's just call it the last 10 years. OK, so you look at anyone from Benny Friedman to Nisim Black to Zusha to Mordechai Shapiro whoever you're going to say, um, and their success is really rooted in the renewed sound that they brought to the table. Um, because there's a lot of people that could just sing and, you know, and just create the typical generic type of music. But what makes people big, what makes people famous, what makes people interested in you is when you are, you bring a chidosh to the table. You bring something new that hasn't been heard yet. You know, you take a guy like Milo Cohn, okay? Um, not even everyone was crazy about his voice necessarily, but um, he brought a new sound to the table and that sound brought him success. So I always tell people like, find what it is that you're bringing to the industry that they haven't heard before. And that will make you stand out. That's the most important thing, I think, in this industry. Wow. Okay, two more questions. Are you ready? Sure. What are your dreams about something that you really, really want to accomplish? Can you say it again? What are your dreams What's something that you really, really want to accomplish? What are my dreams? What are the things that I really want to accomplish? My dreams are to bring Jewish music to the entire world and to be Makadish Shem Shemayim on the most mass global scale that I possibly can. Um, and what am I trying to accomplish? Um, I guess essentially to inspire as many people as possible because that's really what this is all about. Um, it's not about, for me anyway, it's not about the fame or the popularity. Um, of course, it's one of the things that come along with it. and. Right. I'm very grateful for everyone that, you know, listens to my music and people who stop you on the street and recognize you. It's always very complimentary to experience that. But above all, I would say um, is, you know, to inspire as many people as possible and make a change and difference for the good in people's lives through my music. Beautiful. All right. Yoni Z, what is a life lesson? that you can teach us? 
a life lesson that I can teach you. This is the reason why you were on here. Meaning? Like, that's you were here to share this life lesson. Oh. Ooh, that's a lot of pressure. Okay, so let me think about that. You said you work best in pressure, so. Oh, you got me. Mm. You, you got me. Okay. Um, a life lesson. Never, ever give up on something that you truly believe in. No yes. Matter, no matter what people tell you. If you believe in it, go for it. If you stop believing in it, leave it. But so long as you believe in it, don't listen to what anyone else has to say. And just wow. go. If you believe you're capable of doing something, then do it and do it all the way. And don't half ways it. Like, really, if you're in, then you're all in and you have to give it your all and never ever ever give up it's not an option beautiful all right yoni z thank you so much for joining this beautiful wonderful and amazing elevate yourself it's you will be all here for more interviews and daily videos please what's up the number 541-604-8581 i'm gonna repeat it again 541-604-8581 and don't forget to elevate the planet and that Hashem loves you To be added to the email group chat, please contact the number 541-604-8581.